Well, good evening. My name is Pam Hernser. I'm Covenant Pastor for Congregational Care at Williamsburg Presbyterian Church. And welcome to our Wednesday night Lenten devotional. God has promised to make a new covenant with us. Our Lord has promised to write God's law on our hearts. We will no longer teach another to say to each other, know the Lord, for we shall all know the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, you promised your new covenant with us. Help us to hear the words of scripture as your word of the new covenant established in Jesus Christ for us today. Amen. Well, I am standing in our backyard where we recently cleared out some woods. It is open now and we can see from one side to the next. Just a week ago, it was hard to walk through these woods due to down logs and so many saplings growing up and the overgrowth, even in the winter. When everything bloomed, we actually just didn't go into the woods. Once all the debris was cleared, suddenly we became aware of the varied landscape, the hills and the ravine and large trees that we didn't really appreciate were there. It is so nice to be able to walk our dogs in here and our chickens. Well, they're having a wonderful time scratching through all the ground up wood and dirt. We've even began to dream of maybe fencing this area and getting goats and alpacas. It's like a new place where we can imagine different possibilities for this area. Well, the work on our forest has been on my mind as I have prepared our Lenten devotional. I began to wonder if part of our lives individually and communally have dense forest or woods where it is difficult to walk through see the other side and consider new possibilities. Those places in our lives cluttered with logs that have been tripping us up for years, or maybe we are stretched so thin, there are so many saplings in our lives that we are unable to see the large trees that are thriving. Or maybe there is just so much overgrowth and undergrowth, that which we cannot control those things like the crisis of health, finance, or relationships. So I wonder this Lenten season, if we together, as a community, with God's law written on our hearts so that we all know God, that we can work together to rid the clutter, the debris, the overgrowth, to create a new place, a place of possibilities, of justice, compassion, and love. Our scripture today comes from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. Listen for the word of God. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or just say to one another, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Before we connect this scripture to our Lenten journey, it is very important to understand the context in which Jeremiah is written. The book of Jeremiah revolves around the period leading up to the fall of Jerusalem in 587 BC and the time immediately afterward when Israel's leaders and prominent persons were exiled to Babylonia and many others migrated to Egypt. 
The destruction of Jerusalem and the temple by the Babylonians also meant the end of the Davidic line of kings. The raising of the temple and the end of the Davidic line led to a significant crisis for God's chosen people that intertwines social, political, economic, military, and religious elements. The Israelites, God's chosen, the people God promised land, kingdom, ancestors, generation after generation, are left with nothing. No land, no temple, no king, no community. The Israelites are devastated and questioning what now? What is our future? Where is our God? Smith and Hawley's commentator states, quote, The reason these disastrous events took place is most basically related to the nature of the God-Israel relationship. The book Jeremiah makes a theological claim that these events occurred not because Israel's God was incompetent or uncaring, but because the people of God were unfaithful and their own God would not, could not, remain indifferent for the future of creation is at stake, end quote. Now, I want to clarify that this passage is not saying that when we experience sickness or tragedy, tragedies, natural disasters, that is because we have sinned. Jeremiah is asserting that when we do not follow God's law, and treat one another with dignity and respect, there are lasting consequences. The prophet, prophet Jeremiah writes to make known to these scattered and disillusioned people, people trying to make sense of their relationship with God and the world, that their God, and I quote, is present and active on their behalf. This divine engagement means that despite the people's unfaithful past, and desperate present, God will make all things new." End quote. The key here is that Jeremiah acknowledges the deep suffering people are enduring, and Jeremiah also recognizes that human beings cannot, on their own free will, follow the law without being transformed from within. We cannot fix our problems on our own. In our passage today, Jeremiah writes to an audience in misery, and he writes to break through the walls of disillusionment, doubt, despair, to bring hope of a future, a future where God's law is written on people's hearts, all people, from the least to the greatest, because everyone, everyone will know God. It is a future of forgiveness, a future where sin is no longer a part of memory. Hope is found in God's grace, not in human ability to the fall of the law and be perfect. During this fifth week of Lent, this passage reminds us of God's new covenant of redemption that is beginning but is not yet complete. When we struggle, when we ask questions such as what now and how much more, our passage points us forward to live in hope of a future when all will know God. It is a future with God's laws written on our hearts by which we are transformed within and leads us. It leads us to a just and compassionate world. It is a future of forgiveness and it is a future when sin is no longer part of our memories. Now you be saying to maybe saying to me, I would be saying this, nice words, Pam, but they don't help me now. And I agree. Words are not enough. I began our meditation talking about our forest. Multiple times over the last eight years, mostly Brent, sometimes me, and sometimes our son took chainsaws and tried to make a dent in this wood in these woods a dent that got overgrown very very quickly we needed help we needed the right people and we needed the right equipment i believe the crises and problems we face in life can be like trying to clean up a forest we stand on the edge 
looking into the shadows, unable to see to the other side, unable to even see a path forward. It is hard to step into a forest, knowing that we will stumble on down logs, get pricked by thorns and scratched by poison ivy. Trying to do it alone doesn't get us very far. It is hard to hold on to the promise of the covenant, to believe that through the new covenant, our pain can be transformed into new life and our tears can be replaced with joy. This new covenant though, was not made with individuals. It's made with a community. It is a covenant in which God intends to be present in our lives always. It is a covenant which it is a covenant in which God says, I will be their God and they shall be my people. As God writes God's laws on our hearts and we know God more fully, we as a community, together, empowered with the Holy Spirit, we can live in hope of this new covenant and clear the debris which prevents us from living grace-filled lives. As a community, we can walk with one another, support one another, and help one another to clear those dense forests in our lives such as broken relationships, lost jobs, and the death of loved ones. By living in hope of the new covenant with God's law written on our hearts, by being transformed from within, we can clear out the dense forests of racism and sexism, classism, to name just a few to create a community, a just community, a compassionate community, a place where we can see to the other side, a place where we can imagine new possibilities, a place where we can rejoice in God's creation. We are in our fifth week of Lent. The cross is near. May we open ourselves to a gal God to write God's law on our hearts, to transform us from within, to live into God's promise of a new covenant, that we may know God more fully, to create new places for all people, all people to experience justice, compassion, and love. May we support and work with one another to clear dense forests to become places of possibility. Amen. Well, friends, God has forgiven us and established a new covenant with us in Jesus Christ. In Christ, God has written God's law on our hearts. May we go from here as a witness to the new covenant of peace and justice for all. Lift let us lift up the brokenhearted and stand with the oppressed and let everything we do be out of our love of God in Christ. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the church be a beacon of hope guiding all of God's children home. Amen.